Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Rico's Rants. I'm your host, Rico DiGiorgio. And I'm Stephanie Goof. And here we are. As you can see, we're going to be talking about a certain indie film. <laughs> uh, Princess Bride. Yeah, not very well known. No. We're doing <laughs> Star Wars uh, Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. I did do an earlier video. I actually did two earlier videos. Um, and because I'm a dumbass... I tilted the camera, I tilted my phone in a different way, so if you watched it, you saw me doing the review like this. So we're going to, I just, happy holidays, again, uh, just a quick little reminder, happy holidays to everyone. I got a tablet, so this will be the first official Rika's Rants on a fucking tablet. So we're going to do this properly. Um, I already saw Last Jedi opening night. I did a spoiler-free review, and I then did the fucking sideways spoiler-filled review. And because that was a first-time viewing, it was amazing to me. And then the day after, the high wore off and the hangover took over of <laughs> what I just fucking saw. And my opinion of it has changed dramatically. She, on the other hand, just saw for the first time last night. Mm -hmm. She may have a different opinion uh, than I do. So we will do a uh, spoiler-filled review for your viewing or unviewing pleasure. That being said, Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. So let's talk about the good first. The good is, for me, that it's Star Wars. And that it brings back a lot of the nostalgia... That I had when I, you know, from all the films, including the prequels, including the shows, um, because it's Star Wars. You see a lightsaber, <laughs> you see blasters, you know, you see all that shit. You see stormtrooper esque characters. You see a big bad character. You see good characters. Um, you see a lot of throwback characters. Yes, um, but that also that whole throwback character kind of thing goes, for me, a little bit in the critical, disappointing part. Whereas in, like, in Force Awakens, they had a throwback character uh, from, uh, a, a, a throwback uh, from way back when character handled properly. Whereas in this one, they didn't do it properly, in my uh, opinion. But we'll get to that later. Um, more of the good is that cinematically, this was very impressive. It had a lot of amazing... Uh, CGI scenes and had a lot of great practical effects. There were times where you're like, that's a dude in a costume. Mm -hmm. um, where I really love that throwback because one of the big problems with the prequels um, for a lot of people, including myself, was that it over relied heavily on CGI. Whereas we kind of missed the Muppet Yoda. Yeah. Um, where, you know, seeing a CGI Yoda was just kind of like, I mean, it's impressive, but it's it just seemed very cold and clinical. And, and I knew what George Lucas was trying to do. He was trying to, you know, go with groundbreaking technology, blah, blah, blah. But it's nice to see a dude in a giant Muppet mask. So that was cool. Um, well acted throughout the majority of the cast. Majority of the cast. <laughs> um, I thought... Daisy Ridley improved her performance from Force Awakens as Rey. Um, because I, I kind of felt like while her character was very fascinating and new in Force Awakens, her acting was kind of stiff a little bit. But also, she was very new. I mean, even J.J. Abrams like took her aside and said, do better. Like, your acting is stiff and wooden. Do better. Mm -hmm. Um... Which puts a lot of pressure on a young, new actor, especially in a big, giant fucking movie like this. Franchise. Yeah, the biggest <laughs> franchise of all time, no less. Um, the franchise that started all the franchises, with the exception of, like, Star Trek. Um, Adam Driver as Kylo Ren, or Ben Swolo, if you prefer. Um, he was better. I like the fact that we got to see his face. We got to see a lot of acting range. He does kind of come off very snarky a couple times, very angry, but he's a bad guy, so he's supposed to be angry. 
Well, I think he showed the inner conflict by trying to keep a straight face, being unable to keep a straight face mm -hmm. very well. That was a very fine line of just being flat faced and boring and being flat faced with conflict. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I also think they could have uh, delved a little bit into the conflict a little bit more. Agreed. Um, I thought, I mean, we're, the, the big one that's coming back, what, you know, a good chunk of the people who went and saw this movie wanted to see Mark Hamill. Because we just got a little, 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 little taste of him in Force Awakens. Now listen, I'm a massive Mark Hamill fan. You know this. You guys know this. So, was I grateful to see Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker come back? Absolutely. Was I... Was I happy with with the outcome? No. Um, but we'll talk about that. Just give you a little... Little... Little uh, pinpoints of what we're going to talk about. Um, overall, the music, I thought was fine, but it kind of was not the grand John Williams score that we grew to appreciate. There yeah. was no Duel of the Fates from Phantom Menace. There was, oh, no. There was no Imperial March. There was no grand theme where you're just like, oh my god, that's such a great thing. Like, this was just kind of like... Like an average movie with with score behind it. Yeah. It was not... Part of Star Wars is that music is a character... And they didn't. Exactly. They didn't utilize that. No, there was no like, like when all the other movies came out. I'm like, oh man, I can't wait to download that th that download that soundtrack. Although they did do a throwback to Leia's theme when she was coming when she was forcing herself back into the. They do. The, they do the Leia and Han love theme. Yeah. And that's the thing is like the music. Some of the music's new, but a lot of it's recycled. Mm -hmm. um, even going so far as that the the main new Last Jedi theme. It reminded me so much of Jurassic Park. <laughs> yes, you, I thought it was too. You noticed that? <laughs> yes. Like it was very much like, da -na -na, da -na. like you're like, dun, 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 dun. that's fucking Jurassic Park. <laughs> like he just recycled his own. Sh and look, I John Williams is like 112. <laughs> he's not. I mean, no, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but not. I mean, he, he's literally like 85. Uh, yeah, he's been doing scores for a very long time. Can you, can you imagine when he started out, he was known as Johnny Williams? Um, but, like, he, I, get, I give him credit. Like, he is the last real cinematic um, composer. I mean, he, you know, the fact that he's done all eight Star Wars films is impressive and is really heartwarming to know that there's a strong possibility that he will finish the saga. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I mean, I got a throwback to the guy who did Rogue One, Michael Giacchino, who sort of took over for him. He's sort of the new John Williams because he did the music for uh, Jurassic World. So he did a great job with the music score. So they have a good backup. But John Williams, I just felt like, you know, he's just kind of tired. Yeah, he was shuffling this one along. Yeah, and maybe, and that, that whole, even if the music is sort of underperforming, that sort of went with my opinion of the film itself. It set the tone. It very much set the tone. It was just very much... <laughs> like, if I'm not wowed by the music, how I've been since I was, you know, a kid, the movie better, like, pick up. Um, so the music was fine. Not amazing, but fine. Um, cinematically, it was very well done. There was a lot of amazing shots, that fight scene. There was some great fight scenes. Um, and again, spoilers through the whole fucking thing. If, if you haven't seen Last Jedi, then you're like the one person. Um, Dad, have you seen Last Jedi? <laughs> um, there are some great fight scenes. Uh, particularly the scene with in Snoke's chambers, and we'll talk about that later. Um, where th I, I'm blanking on the name of the guards. Of Pra Praetorian, I think is what they're called. But they're the, totally the fucking Imperial guards that the Emperor had, the Red Dudes. Mm -hmm. um, that fight scene was phenomenal. That, that was really cool. Um, Got a hand into that. And, and I'm not really a fight scene kind of person. And the fight scene between Kylo and Luke. The most intense lightsaber scene, lightsaber uh, fight scene I've seen without lightsabers actually hitting each other. 
That was new for me. And it 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 kind of made me feel like, well, let's just combine the Matrix <laughs> with Star Wars and see what happens. Like I'm all for a Jedi dodging a light uh, a lightsaber blade, but like he's got a back in him. That's, we missed up. Well, we got plenty of that in the movie. If you really think about it, there is not a whole lot of lightsaber action in this movie. Not compared to the other ones. True. I mean, the only time you ever see a lightsaber clash against each other is that fight scene, the Snoke it's fight Snoke's, scene. Yeah. And that's almost towards the end of the film. Well, I didn't miss it. <laughs> well, I missed it. <laughs> Um, I'm like, oh, great. It's not full of just lightsabers zingings against each other. But, I mean, that's, that's it's, it's, it's as much of a staple of Star Wars as John Williams' score is. You know, it's Star Wars. You want to see some fights. And that's Star Trek where we're like, where the fuck are we? <laughs> um, so, more good. Um, John Boyega as Finn, I, I actually thought that they gave him more of a great character development mm -hmm. in this film. I also think they had a clear opportunity to give him a nice arc, and they failed. Um, but we'll talk about that later. Um, Oscar Isaac, I felt like he had potential in this film, and he's a great actor as Poe, mm -hmm. um, but I felt like they just kind of didn't, do much with him. They they had opportunity. This whole movie, I mean, it's hard to keep going back into the negative and trying to be positive. They they the whole movie had lots of potential for many 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 ways. It's it's funny because like, you you saw all the setup, mm. and then they didn't do any of the follow through. Mm -mm. They set up so many things for characters to have arcs, for a story to have uh, a different change for so much mm -hmm. and then when you got to the other end it was disappointing yeah my liking for this film is that it is like compared to a tv show this should have been the midway arc of a show where something crazy happens like game of thrones or sopranos one of those big shows where something happens the rest of the season has to recover from this Mm -hmm. But this episode was really just an episode filler. It was like, well, it's episode 9. Not 10. Not when things are starting to end. It was just basically, things happen, but it doesn't really flow the story super much for me. Things happen that will affect episode 9, but this episode 8 was just... We'll get to it. Um, trying to stay the positive. Um, Leia. Carrie Fisher was amazing. Like, if this is her final performance, and it is, it is a great way for her to end her life, career, her me most memorable role. Uh, but they even dropped the gun on that one. Yep. I mean, is that the expression, drop the ball or drop the gun? Ball. Ball. Uh, hold on. You talk for one second. I'm getting a call. No, I think that one's mine. No, it's Go ahead, talk. Yeah, so with uh, Carrie Fisher's character, they, it was great how um, they tied her in with with the old characters and how strong she was. And in more ways than one, she was more badass than any other character of Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, we, we said this in the car as we left the theater, that, like, the ballsiest, toughest character in the whole saga of Star Wars is Leia. It's not Vader, it's not fucking Kylo, it's not Luke, it's not Han. Nope. The biggest pair of balls belongs to Leia. I th I think in particular, every time that she saw a win, she also saw the loss. Mm -hmm. And they made that very poignant in this particular episode, is what their cause costs. Mm -hmm. And Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was a nice send-off to her. Um, I also think that they fucked up in many ways. They had plenty of opportunities to end her character. Because everyone who went in the movie knew this was her last performance. Yep. So when we saw that part of the trailer where Kylo's about to like maybe gun down her ship in his ship, and he's hesitating, and she senses him, and he senses her, 
we're all thinking, oh shit. This is it. But we're also kind of like, we're preparing for that. Well, they definitely did something we didn't fucking prepare for. But they also could have done, there's there so many opportunities to give her a final touching finale. You know, like when, when Han died, spoiler, in, <laughs> I mean, it's been two years. Snape killed Dumbledore, by the way. Um, uh, when Han died in Force Awakens, it was heartbreaking. It was a big sacrifice. It was him doing what a parent would have to do to save their child. He said, I will do whatever I can to save you, even at the cost of my own life. To be fair, Harrison Ford didn't want to fucking be in Star Wars anymore. So he's like, I'll do this if I die. Mm -hmm. Like, he wanted the Ewoks to kill him. <laughs> no, no, that's true. Harrison Ford told Luke, he's like, can't these fucking little teddy bears kill me? Can they, can they roast me over the fire and eat me? And George was like, no. <laughs> so Han Solo, Harrison Ford wanted out. So it was a nice, very touching way of being like, this well, is the opposite of Vader and Luke. This is... Yes, he, he wanted to sacrifice himself because he knew yeah. that when Kylo or ben. ben killed him, that it would create that fissure right. through him. And they have a, they have a visual representation of the of the fissure from when he fought with uh, Ray, mm -hmm. and he has the scar down his face and chest. Yeah, but. It, it just made it more poignant yeah. with with Han's death as to why he, he didn't just sacrifice himself. He sacrificed for a bigger cause. Yeah. For converting his son. No matter what, whether Kylo will turn Jack to the light or whether he'll be a straight-up villain. His, Which, his... you know, there are so many times in this film where he, he was given opportunities to turn. Yeah. And, but he was also forced into a corner he's like is this if this is what you see of me then that is what i will become and i yeah. think that that was the most disappointing thing in the whole film because i thought for sure that he was going to be like oh my gosh i don't agree with any of this let's kill the master let's kill it all and and start over which he did do that but then mm -hmm. but it was for his own gain it wasn't for the greater cause he could have turned to the light right then but he's viewing it as a greater cause. Because when, again, spoiler, he kills Snoke. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that later. Um, when he kills Snoke, and he and Ray kill the fucking guards and everything, and he says, join me. Come to me. We can bring balance to the Force together. We can start a new order. He's, in his own image, and in his own mind's eye, he's thinking... I will, I will restore galaxy. I will restore balance of the galaxy. Because he wants to bring the galaxy into the gray. Everything that he's seen is, is, is ultimate evil or ultimate light. And that's the only options. And he says that in his mind's eye, that's just the ultimate prejudice. prejudice. And so he was like, let's just fuck all this. You, Ray, you and me, we, we see both the light and the dark. Mm -hmm. Let's just start over. So, my point is, is every villain doesn't view themselves as a villain. They view themselves as the hero of their own story. They think, like, going to Voldemort, going to Darth Vader, they think, they're not thinking, like, I'm a bad guy, I'm gonna fuck shit up. They're like, no, I'm doing what I believe is right. I'm doing what I think is right. May be, other people may disagree with me, but I know deep down 100% that I am right. That's what Kylo is thinking, and it's him leading towards the gray, or him just being like, I, I know what I'm doing is right. Um, but a lot of that greed was thrown in there. When I, when, when I first saw it, I kept thinking of the line from Wall Street, where Michael Douglas says, greed is good. And that's the character itself, is that he feels that, well, I may be greedy, I may be a monster, but I also think I'm doing right. But, again, we'll we'll touch all the negative shit later. I'm trying to think if there's any more positive shit. There's really not uh, a Rose. lot. Huh? When they added new characters Rose, in. Um, Rose was a, was a... She was refreshing as a new rebel. Uh, I found her, you know... Because she was intelligent and spunky and she would 
she would go against a hero and mm -hmm. and she would sacrifice everything. That she was she was the ultimate view of a rebel until until but and the all, end. and <laughs> also there's a part this was rare for a Star Wars film where we got an opening that was separate from the main storyline but inter integral to a secondary character's storyline. Yes. So it starts off with her sister, um, like, basically having to sacrifice herself to bomb a giant ship. Yes. The and Nagra? The... the, the I don't know. The fuck anyway, the huge ship. Huge ship has to... And that was a nice scene. And I, when I first saw it, because I was... I don't, I don't know anything about the actress who plays Rose. When I first saw it, I'm like, is this the chick? That I'm, is this, because, you know, I don't know anything about them. So I'm like, huh, how'd you look different? I'm like, oh, okay, so it's someone else. Um, because she died immediately. <laughs> um, real poignant scene, and I didn't think I would ever give a shit about Rose, because I'm like, why introduce more characters? We don't even know who the fuck these other characters are that they introduced in Force Awakens. So stop adding new characters. But I did find myself at 26 giving a fuck. And being like, wow, okay, I actually do care about this character's arc. I feel for her. And then it all went to shit at the end. Yep. Then I was like, oh, man, you were so great. Then you fucked it all up. Um, any other good? Um, it, I did laugh out loud a lot. But that's also kind of a criticism. Yes. So, that being said, unless we can randomly think of something that's great, we're not going to go into the negative. For me, numero fucking uno. Leia. What we were talking about before, Leia had an amazing character in this film, championed by the great Carrie Fisher. Um, that scene where Kylo is about to fucking nuke her, um, he ha he doesn't do it. He hesitates. He's like, you know what? I can't. It's my mother. There's that whole there's that old saying that like men want uh, boys want to kill their fathers and marry their mothers. He killed his mother. I don't think he could kill his mother. I don't think he wants to marry her either, but it's different. Yeah, he killed his father. He ki yeah, he killed his father, but, like, he just... It's a different thing. It's, it's about taking over that identity or killing the past, which is frequently uttered a lot in this movie. Um, which I think Ryan Johnson was just saying to the fans, forget the past. Fuck you guys. I'm doing my own thing. <laughs> um, there was a lot of, like, uh, hints from the director to the fans. I mean, like, let the, let the past die. It wasn't a hint. It was said. It was like yeah, several times. Yeah, it was blatantly like. <laughs> there were no hints. So it was hint. It was as, as hinting as a frying pan hitting your head. <laughs> so that part, he yes. has, he doesn't. He hesitates. He but, hesitates. But his crew it, behind him don't. Yeah, because they're not like, well, fuck you. We don't care if it's your mom. We're gonna bomb her. She's a fucking general of the resistance. We're gonna kill her. Um, her bridge of her ship explodes. And she sucked out into space. And we're like, oh, fuck! She's gonna die. This is it. They did it. They And then she's out in space, and it, it very much Gardens of the Galaxy-ish. <laughs> yes. Like, face kind of freezing over, and we see her hand tremble, do this. And then she extends it, her eyes open, and then she force pulls herself to the ship, and, like... I didn't have a problem with that. I was actually kind of like, that's fucking awesome. I was like, about fucking time, we all knew she had it. She, she, is, <laughs> she is the twin. We all Luke. knew she had the force. She was, she's a twin of Luke. Luke is a Jedi master. She's the offspring of Anakin. So she would have the chosen one's force powers. So she would be... Maybe not as deep as everyone else, but she had powers. It was very evident. She, she has just as much force powers force wielding powers as Luke does just no training so you can interpret this as Luke gave her some pointers or she her instinct or whatever took over or the force said, you know what no we're gonna keep you alive and then so a lot there's a big running meme going on about how she's like super Leia like <laughs> doing this shit and flying I they're like I don't for Jedi's can't fly she didn't fly she pulled herself yeah and that's what I interpreted um, and she lived. Okay, she lived. I, I'm fine with that. 
And then um, she wakes up out of her fucking coma when that was a clear opportunity they didn't have to do. They could have just been like, hey, there's this awesome force power scene that she did, but she still died. Right. Um, would have been... That could have been an out. I mean, it would have been yeah. a cheap out, but they could have been. It could have been out. It, if, if, that, if they had done that, we would have been like, okay, that, that's when they had to edit around her. Right. That, that would have made sense. Um, they also had a clear opportunity to have her be the Holdo character who was not fucking needed. The fucking, look, all, all due respect to Laura Dern, her character was not needed in this film. At all. At all. And her, her character came off, um, unhelpful, didn't pass on any information, kept her fucking information, kept her cards close to her, um, to, especially the people around her. Her own teammates, like Poe. If she had just told Poe what the fuck she was going to do... He wouldn't have gone off the handle and kept doing things that... You know, right. You know, against the rules. If she just said, hey, we have a plan. Stop fucking with it. He, he point blank asked her for plan. And she wouldn't tell him. She's like, respect my daughter! <laughs> Sorry. And that's not how the rebels work. They work together. Th- that's so how, it felt that's how really Leia would have weird. It. it felt really fucking weird that she wouldn't say... We have a base close enough that if we last long enough, everyone can escape to the base. Yes. That's all she needed to say. And, and Poe would have helped. Yeah. He would have probably had been siphoning the the gas from the pa- the other two vehicles into, yeah. the, into the big one so that they could get even closer. Right. If he had known. Instead, he had to go on a fucking, basically his own mission with Finn and Rose. And the whole thing, that whole fucking casino thing... Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And also, the whole point of that was just to put Finn in front of Phasma. To have that little showdown, which only lasted about one minute. Yep. Everything you saw in the trailer was what was in the film. And Phasma was such a... Well, that whole planet scene about the rich versus the poor... I actually kind of like that. The the whole point is, is that entire world of Grey... Everything that comes back to everything's in shades of gray. Yeah. Where, you know, they got their wealth from selling to both sides. They got their wealth from from basically just riding on the, the power that they could. could. And on the one hand, it, it fuels the rebels in helping with the unjust. And on the other hand, it fuels the, uh, what is it, First Order? Mm-hmm. In, in showing that order means everything and this is the right path and this is the culture we should right. uh, we should obtain. Right. And so it you know it it was showing essentially two sides of the same coin. Right. Like like that figurine where there's or that picture where there's two people and it's a 6 on one side and it's a 9 on the other. Both people are right but it's two different it's, outlooks it's, of it's, culture. It's yin yang. Yeah. Which they focus a lot on. A this. ton. There was a lot of duality. There was a lot of balance. Which the irony was that all these theories for Luke was stemming from his line saying the Jedi must die or mm-hmm. the Jedi must end. There were so many fan theories about how he was a gray Jedi. That the Jedi must die so that we can embark on this, this new middle class uh, balanced Jedi order. Right, where it's not only light and only dark. That right. you can tap into either and have the ability to... Control to, both. To, yeah, be both. Yeah. If you can... You have to embrace the dark and the light to be powerful. To, well, to be a full person. To be a full person and to be the ultimate Jedi. And that was what we thought it was going to be. All those original Jedi texts... The first Jedi Bibles, essentially. Page Turners, they were not. <laughs> Page Turners, were they? <laughs> um, first off, that is the first time we've ever seen... You like that? It's too funny. <laughs> uh, that's the first time we've ever seen paper. Yes. In Star Wars. Every book is a hologram, or everything is a hologram. Um, no paper. So... Goes to show how ancient they are. Oh they didn't, they, but they didn't fucking talk about it at all. Didn't need to. Why? Uh, uh, come on, man. Like J- Luke is embracing the teachings of the first Jedi's, 
and then talks about none of it. He wasn't embracing it, he was protecting it. He was, I mean, he, he became a Jedi Master because he found them and learned. Because he had no training apart from fucking Yoda for three goddamn days. So, you have to imagine he became a Jedi Master from reading a fuck ton and maybe hanging out with Yoda's ghost and Obi-Wan's ghost occasionally. Be like, hey, I'm, I'm page 47. <laughs> um, how am I supposed to do this double flip? <laughs> how am I supposed to, I mean... Obi-Wan, how'd you do the Jedi, like, mind trick thing? Because Now, I, I always imagined those books would be more on the meditative control. But I still would have liked a little... I, I just wanted a little bit of backstory. I just wanted... I mean... No, none, none of this movie gave backstory. No. This, it was all in the present. This movie was very much... Everything you thought you were going to find out, fuck you. And that was very much Ryan Johnson... I'm more pissed off at Ryan Johnson because... He is a talented. He's a talented filmmaker. Looper was one of is one of my favorite sci-fi films. It was one of the few films on Bruce Willis I really enjoy. Um, and I thought they hired him specifically because he did a lot about time travel. And I was like, oh man, they may throw time travel in this. We may see young fucking Hayden Christensen's Anakin Skywalker show up and bitch slap fucking Kylo and be like, stop <laughs> fucking with my daughter, you fuck. Um, <laughs> You owe my daughter an apology, you all whiny and shit. Stop it! <laughs> Kylo Ren's like, you're not Darth Vader. I am Darth Vader! You don't know what you're talking about! <laughs> there was a rumor that he was going to show up in this movie. I would have loved to have seen that because that would have been a positive fuck you to the fans. Being like, you know what, the prequels? Tough shit. The prequels exist. Yeah. Instead, he said, everything you want to know about Snoke, not going to happen. Everything you want to know about Ray, I want to throw in this little fuck you. Be like, oh, she's nobody. She's she's born from nothing. She's raised by no one. She is her own person, and yet she is the embodiment of the light. Listen, I'm not gonna fucking believe that bullshit. I think Kylo was lying to her. I think Kylo was just being like. Uh, of course he was lying to her. He's dark. He said that that is her weakness, and he's gonna jab at it. But Darth Vader told Luke the truth. I am your father. He could have been like, Because Obi -Wan he's trying to turn him. Right. So if he really wanted to tell her the truth and turn her, he would have been like, I absolutely know who you are. You are the fucking, you're the clone of Anakin. You're a clone of Luke. We got it from his fucking severed hand, which we found the lightsaber, which they didn't fucking explain in this movie. This movie just <laughs> had all the shit that you thought and theorized for two fucking years explain none of it. And it really, it, it grinds my gears. It really pissed me off because... Ryan Johnson knew all about our theories. He was like, oh, well, you think uh, Snoke is Darth Plagueis? I'm just going to kill him. Explain none of it. So, on one hand, it could be a really clever ploy to be like, I'm going to piss you guys off and I'm going to ruin episode nine. Yeah, Fucking... it was all, he, it could have been a setup for the next one, but it's like, why? Well, the truth is, is J.J., <sighs> Um, he came up with all these characters. He came up with Snook. He came up with Ray. And he put in little seeds of, like, mystery, like, fucking, um, Maz Kanata, the fucking little brown Yoda chick. Um, she was like, like, Han was like, where'd you find this lightsaber? And she was like, that's a story for another time. Great, we're gonna find out it. Oh, no, fuck you. <laughs> and what was the point of even having her in this movie? She had like one small cameo, and they build her really prominently. Like Lupita Nyong'o is going to be back as Miles Kanata. And you're like, what? Sh fucking Yoda had more screen time than her in this movie, let alone in the other ones. Um, yeah, man, I just had a big problem with everything. <laughs> Like, the, the most frequent thing that I've said about this movie is that it's a bad movie with a lot of great scenes. Because there's a lot of parts where I'm just like, oh my god, that's fucking awesome. And then you're like, wait a minute. That's the story the... just doesn't follow through. Yeah, they don't do a goddamn thing. Yeah, Snoke died, but I want to know who the fuck he is. I want to know how... Oh, the... how he died was amazing. How he died was legit. That was so awesome. I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Is like it's a lot of gr he he throws you curveballs where you're like, whoa, they did that. Like that light speed kamikaze crash. Yep. That was legit. Because this is all shit that like 
when you're a kid and you're playing fucking Star Wars with your toys or with your lightsabers, you're like, I don't understand why they don't just, like, a Jedi doesn't turn on a, a cis lightsaber when it's, like, in his hilt and stab his own foot. <laughs> And, like, Michael and I and Joe and I would, like, pretend, like, I turn on your lightsaber while you're, like, looking at it. And like, Ryan Johnson was like, I don't remember thinking like that. I'm just going to do that. And that was badass. The whole turning the lightsaber and, and then having it, pulling it so it cuts through him. And I didn't really, I saw this the second time last night. His hand is still there. Yeah. No, it cut off his it, arm. It cut off his hands and he just, and like. And they were resting there, too. They're just resting there? Yeah. And that was awesome. But. I want to know how the Emperor's dead, right? That means it's the end of the fucking dark side. Well, I mean, as far as we know. As far as we know. But the thing is, is the Sith, there's always two. Yeah. There's a Master and Apprentice. So, Darth Vader's the Apprentice. The Emperor's the Master. They're both dead. You could argue that some guy turned bad, but there's no Sith teacher to teach. So that my, you know of. That we know of. So, but that's a vast universe, and they could have pockets of, of schools, too. Not really, because the Sith were rumored to be extinct. That's the whole point. Well, so were the Jedi. They still had schools. Oh, I mean, <laughs> they were extinct with the exception of Obi-Wan. And, and, I mean, the in the original trilogy, it was Obi-Wan was the Grand Jedi Master. Then you had Darth Sidious, who was the Sith Lord. Those were it. That was it. If both those guys die, there really shouldn't be no one. That, because that just makes the whole point of if Luke dies, and he did, sorry, um, there should be no teachings. If Rey didn't learn how to be have any Force powers and Luke just died, mm -hmm. theoretically, if no one could teach, there should be no students. But they're one with the force. They can come back as any as beings anytime they wish, just well, like just like Yoda, Yoda did when he fried the fucking tree. Which was fucking bizarre. Yeah. When the fuck did they ever say, "Oh yeah, Jedi's can fucking pull out lightning for no reason"? I was like, "That's a Sith power." Doesn't matter. They're one with the force. They're on both he's sides. A, he's a. I mean, it's just they introduced a lot of random shit that they didn't touch upon. So now Yoda can. Pfft, well, I mean, he was just touching in the natural power. That's just nature. If they just said that. They didn't need to say look, it. Look, Implied. The whole thing I'm tired of is I'm tired <laughs> of theorizing about these fucking movies. I want some goddamn answers. Well, you're not going to get it this time. No, I'm not going to get shit for another fucking two. You know, I found out that they were going to release a book talking about Stokes' origin. Fuck you, Disney. Fuck you, LucasArts. Fuck you, Ryan Johnson. We fucking paid money. We waited two fucking years to find out who the fuck Snoke is. Like, oh, you know what? Go read a book. I'm all about reading fucking books, but if I'm going to go see the fucking movie, I want to see who the fuck he is. I said fuck a lot. But you know what? Fuck this. <laughs> I'm so sick and tired of because the, the only reason why well, Star Wars okay. exists is because of us. Let's go through the list of where they failed. <sighs> I thought we just did. They failed with not telling us Snoke's origins. Yeah. They failed with Kylo, essentially. Uh, how he... Uh, I thought for sure that this was going to be his turning to the light and Rey's turning to the dark. No. I was like 100% ready for that. And they fucked it. They failed with getting letting Leia have her a, a smooth, glorious ending where she could have kamikaze and Go on out with a, ball, a great balls of fire, fury kind of death. Yes. Uh, they shat on uh, Admiral Akbar. Yes, Admiral Akbar had twenty seconds of fame, and, and then he was just him off. was just murdered with with no like he could have been the one that kamikaze. I mean, Jesus Christ! It, they could have done anything with him. You know, if, if it's a drop. <laughs> it's a, you know what he should have done at the fucking end of his role? It's a wrap. <laughs> right. But like, if it, anyone, everybody would have gone fucking nuts. If anyone deserves to fucking end. To sacrifice himself, it's Admiral Akbar. Yes. He is. He would be the number two. Not fucking uh, Hordo. Hordo. Fucking. Who the, whoever she was. Who, who. Border. Anyway. They failed with Poe. Yeah. He had such great opportunity to have a story arc, and they just let him be flat. Yeah. They failed with uh, Finn. Oh, my God. Because of fucking Rose. Yeah, he was about to sacrifice himself, 
And it was like for the greater cause. For the greater cause, and it was also its own personal story. It's like I was raised a stormtrooper. I'm done. I just I'm going to kill the stormtroopers my the best way I know how. And gonna, this is it. I'm just going to be the ultimate fuck you to Phasma and fuck you to Kylo. And then Rose fucking stole his glory. Because if that had blown up, like everyone around would have been done. There would have been no more Kylo. There would have been no more of that shit. Well, Kylo would have been safe in this little fucking fat fat. I call it a fat fat because it's really fat and slower than an at at. It's a fat fat. <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> he would have made a huge bonus towards the towards the rebel. Class. And he would have been the old, he would have been a hero. Yes. But instead, Rose, because she's got a fucking crush, crush on him. Like, no, I'm going to save you, you fucking dummy, because I love you. Yeah, shut the fuck you up. You have to live for love. You know him for fucking a day. you got to be fucking kidding me. Like, look, I'm that all is, for... That is against everything about the rebel cause. The, the rebel cause is doing things for the greater good, not for your own personal That's fucking That's exactly game. my point, right? Like, like, she missed the whole point. Ah. And then he would have been a bigger inspiration. Be like, oh, you know what, dude? This guy was a stormtrooper. He left them and became a hero. And he fucking sacrificed himself for the greater good. For them. That would have been more of a swell for people to join up the resistance. To, you know, be a part of it. Talk. I'm going to get a phone call. Why do people keep calling me? So, yeah. So they, they fucked up with Finn. They fucked up with Rose. Rose was trying to grow as a character oh, and yeah. couldn't. Oh, let's see if we get some light in here. No, no light in here. Um, so, yeah, they, they fucked up with Rose because she could have grown as a person, too, to see that, you know, the greater sacrifice, just like her sister did, is the is the goal, is to have one person save a lot of lives. I mean, they fucked up with, with oh, well, so yeah. many of the characters. Although... I thought bringing R two D two back in, in with uh, with Luke Skywalker was pretty awesome, uh, and he was all like, "That was a cheap shot, guys." Uh, to have him see Leia doing, "You're my only hope," but it really did um, kind of tie in the original franchise and tie in the the original reason why the rebels are the rebels, going against the dark side and going against all of that. So. All in all, I would say that plot lines, okay. I cared more for characters that were just fleeting than I did for the long-standing characters. I cared more for the sister who sacrificed herself in the beginning. I, I teared up when I saw that. I cared more for the creatures that were on that planet and having to uh, try to get free and all the kids that were taking care of them. Can you turn on a light, babe? Yeah. Uh, I cared more for those creatures than I did for the main characters. I, and, and for the frost little foxes that were trying to escape the, the evil, too. Like, just... Oh, the little crystal things? You know, the little... Yeah. I cared more for people and animals and things that weren't... Why we went to see the movie than I did about the characters because they fucked up on their plot lines so bad that mm -hmm. I was just like, I don't, I don't give a shit about them now. All right, so the big thing that I have a problem with, the, the biggest disappointment was Luke. Well, and and you said Mark Hamill even said that, that he disagreed with everything that they made him do. Yeah, yeah. Mark Hamill told Ryan Johnson after reading the script, he said, I fun this is the quote, I fundamentally disagree with everything you're doing with my character. Now that I got that off my chest, I have to do what you want me to do because I'm an actor. But even he was like, where, I'm, I've seen so many interviews, he was like, where's the beacon of hope? Where is the like the guy who stood up before the emperor and said, "I am a Jedi like my father before me," meaning shut your shit down. Um, this guy was like if Han, if this guy, this Luke was if Harrison Ford played him, real grumpy, just get off my lawn. And look, I get it. I get the whole like I'm grumpy and I'm eat and I'm like really shut down. And I want to be alone. Because that's a nice arc. I, I don't mind the fact he's hiding on an island. Well, he was hiding on an island because he figured he fa he saw himself as failing the order, you know, failing the Jedi. Failing the Jedi and failing his family. And so he was just hiding away and didn't want it to be brought to his face. But at the same time, you would have expected the Luke that we grew up with to be like, as soon as Ray said, "Yeah, Kylo killed Han." 
that he would have just... He would have been like, oh, fuck that. You would have expected Chewy to, like, remind him, being like, hey, dude, remember, like, 30 years ago we were buddies? Remember that other dude we hung out with? He's dead. You can help us out? Right. You would have expected that art, that real heartfelt R2-D2 moment where he... They, I was just talking about uh, that. I was like, oh, that was a great throwback. That was... And that was... The, uh, that is the whole reason. The, the hope. That is... Yeah, this movie had no hope. <laughs> Whereas, Force, no, quite literally, it really didn't. Force Awakens, I always said this like J.J. Abrams gave us something that George Lucas could not, which was literally give us a new hope. I had hope for the Star Wars trilogy, and Ryan Johnson was just like, yeah. But like this, Luke just came off like real gross, and not just like, oh, he just looks dirty, just like. Really, no, he was gross. He was really immature. And really kind of like not the Luke that... I, I was re-watching clips of Luke and I'm like, the character is completely different. I mean, no one could go through a traumatic arc that much where it changes their personality that much. Well, you gotta remember he's been in exile. He's got those little fucking monkey things that are hanging around with him. He, I mean, he's been probably talking to Obi-Wan and, and Yoda. I mean, he's... But from the very first start, when they recreate that scene at the ending of Force Awakens where she extends the lightsaber, the the, the Excalibur, essentially, mm -hmm. and he takes it and he's got this serious look on his face and he's just like contemplating everything. And when we saw it in Force Awakens, like, oh shit, he knows who she is. He knows... He's gonna, he's gonna reveal so much to he's us. Going, and then the first thing he fucking does is toss it over his shoulder. And, you're, and when we first watch it, we're like, <laughs> what? Wait, what? What just happened? Yeah, why would he do that? That's, I mean, like, what? Because that lightsaber is so significant to everything. It's Anakin's first lightsaber. It became his lightsaber. It was the lightsaber he fought his father with and got his hand cut off. It was the lightsaber that was passed down to Kylo, which means that when Kylo said that lightsaber belongs to me, he wasn't actually, like, lying. Yeah, no, it does. It was more of, like... When we first saw it, it was like, oh, it's his grandfather's lightsaber. He, it's a birthright to him. But he's like, no, it really was his. Yeah. It was passed down to him, it was, and it was his inheritance. And then him just tossing it nonchalantly over his fucking shoulder, and, like, that is so anti-Luke. Luke would have been like, I mean, to be fair, what the fuck could you, what, what would you have had Luke say? Hey, did you find a hand to go with this? No. I mean, it just came off really immature and really mean-spirited really bullyish and really like th look I, I love mark hamill but like then there were some great parts like that tickling of the hand with the leaf like <laughs> reach reach out and he's just like oh, jesus and he's like D here hold, hold out your hand it's like do you feel that yeah i feel that i feel that back i feel that you feel the force oh man you must it's be strong powerful. with you you must be powerful <laughs> that was funny look the, the, but, yeah. but that was wrong though I mean that in a, in a some in some way it was very spiteful and what I really hated about the scene where uh, right after that where she went towards the dark and he said you didn't even resist she doesn't know what the fuck she's doing yeah. she's confessed to him I don't know what the fuck I'm doing I don't yeah. know what any of this means I need a teacher fool and and he's mad at her for not resisting something she didn't even know what the fuck it was yeah like that that is a bad teacher. Not a bad student. He didn't learn anything from Kylo then. He didn't learn a goddamn thing. Because he, when he experienced Kylo going towards the dark, and he tried to eliminate him instead of taking him towards the light, and then it didn't work out, and his school got burned down, but that then, should have been his like turning point where if this comes towards me again, I'll handle it better. No, no, he, he didn't. Just made he, the just, same he just fucking threw mistakes. up his hands. He's like, I know I must be afraid now. I wasn't afraid before, and just walks out on her. And it's like, fuck dude, you. It's like, dude, she doesn't know what she's doing. It just, oh God, it's just it's just so disrespectful to the character because there was literally hundreds of books about Luke post Jedi teaching his students that they're now considered not canon whereas like you could take some inspiration like he he starts a new jedi order and he changes some rules like he gets married jedis aren't allowed to have wives he's like well fuck that rule i want to fuck <laughs> i want to get married i want some love so he, they could have changed the character and and not be deliberate about the of uh, the extended universe which is what they 
were like, yeah. Um, I I did like the detail they did, like the the uh, machine hand. I saw this online. I didn't notice it. The machine hand that he has has a blaster shot in in the hand when he got shot in Java's palace. I'm like, okay, so the detail is great and terrible at the same time in this movie. Um, I thought the porks were cute. We have to talk about the porks briefly. The porks were cute. <laughs> I didn't mind them. Uh, they were. Hurry, hurry! They were okay. I. I thought they were cute. I, I like them more than the fucking Ewoks. I like them. Well, I I grew up watching Ewoks. I loved them more. Well, oh, okay. Um. I don't jo- know. Jordan, uh, when we saw it the first time, Jordan's like, "I want one of those. <laughs> I need to fucking have one of those." And I'm like, "Jordan, <laughs> Jesus." Uh, they, they they were all right, but it, but to me, they were a distraction from the main story. It was like it was why very justified. Why did they add this in? It was very unnecessary. I thought they were they were more cute than the fucking like. They, they, I thought they add more to the story, at least for humor, than the fucking crystal fucking jackal things, or the giant, obviously, horse things. I mean, the horse things were kind of, like, well, symbolic for torture and, like, let them be free and blah, blah, blah. Let them have, let them have cake. Yeah. Um, we are going to have to close up the video soon. I have to go to work in, like, the next ten minutes. Um, but ultimately, it just didn't deliver for me and for you. Like, it had so much potential. It could have been done... It, this could have been the empire of this trilogy. But instead, this is basically the attack of the clones of this trilogy. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, when you're thinking fondly of the prequels compared to this one... <laughs> Which you, is sad because cinematically it was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. Beautifully they, shot. They did so many things that were awesome. Like the, like the uh, going to light speed crash. Oh my God! That was it. That was phenomenal. That was, that was, that was so. Oh, uh, there were so many different delicate scenes that they made, and you're like, wow, bedazzled by it. No. But it was a distraction from the main story, which fell apart. The main thing we have to talk about is that a lot of the fan because the the movie's divided. We're not like alone in this. The movie's divided. And Ryan Johnson is constantly explaining scenes. If you have to explain your movie that much, that means you didn't deliver. That mm-hmm. means you failed. If 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 you have to explain every scene, every detail, then you didn't do the job that you were supposed to do. Um, there's a filmmaker, and I want to talk about him uh, briefly, uh, Matty Granger. He did a review two years ago on The Force Awakens, and this guy... This guy uh, had written a Huffington uh, Post review talking about, like, the 20 fucking reasons why Force Awakens sucks. And Matty Granger um, destroyed this guy. <laughs> like, wrote a whole, like, five-page thing, if not more. I'm sorry, Matty, if I'm wrong. Um, tearing this guy a new asshole. And I was like, this guy is so fucking well, spot with, on. with facts. With facts and opinions, and but mostly just logic. Yeah. Which, with Star Wars fans and logic, it kind of goes... Um, <laughs> So he tore this guy a new asshole, and I was really, um, I was really interested in Matt, Matt's um, uh, review on this one. And he pointed out a lot that like this movie just didn't deliver what it should have, and that it was basically just he phrased it in a way I can't remember. I'm sorry in advance. Where it was like it was the douchey boyfriend that you always give chances for, and it always ends up cheating on you. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, this is not the good guy. This is just basically like, oh, well, he's cute. He's, he's flashy looking, mm-hmm. but ultimately he will fuck you over, which we've all dated someone like that at some point or another. So I, Matt, Matt's review for this was basically just like, this was just missed opportunity to be great. And I wholeheartedly agree. Um, it could This could have been the greatest Star Wars film ever. And I love The Force Awakens, but I'm like, when people are like, oh, Force Awakens was too much like A New Hope. I'm like... But that was the point. That was the point. <laughs> is that it was to tie it back in together. Lucas Lucas said when he was doing the prequels, like, they're, they're supposed to be echoes and shadows of each other. That's why, cinematically, when you watch parts of prequels and parts of the original trilogy, they mirror each other. Mm-hmm. You know, cutting off hands, who's who on the dark side, who's on the light, that they are 
echoes throughout the force because the force is never ending and always expanding. So there'll always be glimmers of what happened and what's to come. So in this film, when they went way too different, it just was like, wait, what? Like, I'm all for different, and I don't need shit to be a shot-for-shot shot remake of Star Wars because I like different. But this was too different. This was being different for the sake of being different. This like, was... you know, Poe doing the whole I'll hold scene. It was also too funny. That was hilarious, but it was, it, too was funny. It, it doesn't tie in to anything that... It, it was just too... I mean... You could you could argue that it's like a throwback to the Han Solo like stalling the uh, stormtroopers in the original one and then shooting him being like boring conversation anyway, right? But that fit with the character. But like we don't need to do that again and again and again. Like him stalling was fine, and then and then they just threw in way too many jokes. Like it was the darkest movie and also the light most light hearted movie. Whereas like if you watch Empire, there's like no jokes. Mm. Um, oh, we gotta talk really quickly. Benito Del Toro. Useless fucking character. At no point was I enamored with this guy. And I love Benito Del Toro as an actor, and I was really excited because he was supposed to be the original uh, Darth Maul. He was cast as Darth Maul in, in Phantom Menace, and then Lucas cut all his lines. He's like, well, fuck you then. And then Ray Park took over and made the role amazing. So I was like, oh my god. He's going to be a bad guy. Maybe he's like the other second command of, of Snoke we don't know about. Maybe he's going to be like... Maybe we, there were all these rumors that he was going to be the grown-up character of Rebels, Ezra, who was like, you know, conflicted with the dark and the light. Like, where, 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 I mean, he looks a lot like him, too. That's what's crazy. Um, no, he's a no. fucking hacker. Yep. That's all he is. He's a fucking hacker. And the, old, the only point he was thrown in was to put Finn, Finn in front in. of Phasma. Yep. Which, ultimately, that could have happened at any other time where Phasma could have been like, oh, hey, Finn. I know you. I know you. And that was really fucked how they just ended her. They killed her. She dead. Yep. We didn't even get to see what she looks like underneath. We saw her eye. Great. We... Real underperformed performance uh, for a great character, a really... Mysteri the new Boba Fett, essentially. You don't know shit about them until they release the prequels, but you're like, who is this badass? Right. And a rare female badass in the Star Wars universe. All the females in Star Wars are usually heroes, so it was nice to see a big, bad one who can hold her own against Finn and just just missed opportunity. But yeah, fucking Bibi Soto Toro is stuttering fucking... What the f shut, the, the, shut the fuck up! <laughs> fucking hate. I just had... I, look, no matter what, I'm a Star Wars fan through and through. So when this comes out on DVD, I'll buy it. I may even have a... I love the poster. The poster is legit. Um, but the whole thing just was... You know, I liked it as much as I liked Phantom Menace. And I loved Phantom Menace when I first saw it. And then years later, I'm like, well, wait a fucking second. Let's think about this shit. I didn't like that movie at all. So I didn't have to wait years to do that. I just like woke up the next day after I saw him like, okay, that movie sucked. On that note, well, like, is it a go out and go see it? Yeah, go out and fucking see this so you can have your own goddamn opinion because this movie was ridiculous. In many great ways and many terrible fucking ways. What would you say? Uh... I'm not really a movie goer person. I only go if I really love the piece. Or if I drag you to it. Or if I get, yeah, yeah. You know, forced to go. Forced so, to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, for me, it's not worth the expense. Yeah. I would just watch it at home. But that's just because I don't like going to the theater. So, yeah. uh, that. but if you are a movie goer and you really need to see it on the big screen, I mean, cinematically, it's gorgeous and that's worthwhile. But... Just be forewarned, you're going to be very disappointed with the plot. You, nothing happens. Nothing happens, and everything you thought was... The best way to phrase it is Luke says in the movie, like, this is not going to end how you think. Yep. And that's basically the whole movie. On that note, I'm Ricky Giorgio. I'm Stephanie Goose. May the Force be with you, because this movie didn't have it. Bye, guys.